Hey guys, it's Regent here. In this video, I'm gonna show you some different strategies on how to tend an Amakosaur in Ark. So let's go. So first of all, the taming stats. The best food would obviously be kibble. If you wanna know how to craft it, make sure to check out the link in the video description where I explain it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend using crops or meho berries, even though you can use them. But uh, yeah, in the video you will see why. It's a passive tame and to tame it you have to you actually have to fight with it so you have to beat some hostile creatures with it and we also need to adjust our temperature to his temperature but I will explain this in the video. It can be carried by the rhino and the cats and also the tuzo no other creature it spawns only on the lost island and the difficulty is three and a half out of five points. So let's get straight into it. So as I already mentioned we will have to fight with the Amagasaur. Um, to do that we will first have to adjust to his body temperature. If I go close to him you will see... Oh, where is it? Where is the option? Oh, he's fighting right now so I think it doesn't count right now. Uh, uh, pressing E, sync temperature to tame. Um, very important for this is we um, in the, we ha can encounter the Amagasaur in the cold or hot area, so in the desert or in the ice biome. Um, to adjust to his temperature in the ice biome, we will need this Fryer Curry. I will show you the cr how to craft the Fryer Curry right now in the screen. And in the hot or desert, we will need the Kalian Soup. Um, I will also show you the receipt right now. So to adjust our temperature now, we will just have to eat the curry. I have it already on me, the effect, so uh, you see I can't eat it twice in a row. We could uh, activate both though. I don't know, I'm wondering right now if the temperature would still be good. But yeah, we <laughs> now you can bo also use both. But yeah, now we just have to press sync our temperatures and now the Amagasaur will follow you. There we go. By the way, I would also recommend taking more of the soups with you or the curries. And from now on we have to kill hostile creatures with him. I will show you this in an example real quick before I show you the different strategies. So for example I just spawned a Rex here just to show it to you. And now you see the Amagasaur will attack it and now we will fight with it. And then if we go up to him we will see the taming process has started. Um, so yeah, this we will have to repeat and sometimes he will ask for food. For that you will need the food of your choice in your last inventory and slot and just feed him passive as you know it from other creatures. And yeah, that's basically it. But now I have some easier and some harder strategies for you on how to do this very efficiently without losing too much taming efficiency from the Amagasaur. And one more thing, um, sometimes it can happen that the Amagasaur will get aggro on you. Even if you have the same uh, temperature then you can just put on a ghillie and uh, approach him like that. But the first strategy would be now to just, yeah, go and hunt with him. Go out and search some hostile creatures and hunt with him. It doesn't work if you, if the creatures are not hostile. So yeah, just take some high HP creatures like a Deon, for example, is a very good example. You can also use alphas that you give him a lot of tam taming process and also Kanos, for example. So I would recommend using these three, but you can also go for Rexes or uh, Snow Owls or Agent Tavis. You can go for anything you want. So I have here a Daedon for example now. He starts fighting and then we can also keep uh, help him with attacking. Oh. There we go. Our Magasaur should have gotten some progress now. You see a decent amount of progress and now he will need he will, he will want some exceptional kibble from you and you see this Daedon gave us already 83% on this level 50 Amagasaur. So you see a pretty efficient way of doing it here. So and now we already tamed our Amagasaur. So if you find some high level Daedons on a low level Amagasaur, you are very quick good to go with him. So one more very important thing, you see the taming efficiency is now at 100% and it will gain 25 levels. But let me show you with this Rex, I just spawned a 150 Rex that will deal some damage to the Amagasaur. Oh, well, there we go. Let him get some damage now. There we go and you see he has gotten some damage and now the efficiency is dropping. So yeah, in the best case you don't get a lot of damage by while taming it. And 
after it's below 80%, you see it's sh even shown there. Um, it's hard to read right now. So I just killed the Rex now and after he is below 80% health, you see we will have to put some veggie cake in our last slot in our inventory. Luckily I have some here and now we can feed it. But yeah, then he will be healed a little bit, but you still see the effectiveness is still weaker than uh, or yeah, worse than before. Another and probably a bit safer strategy on taming it would be to build a small, yeah, just a small taming box. Just take some stone foundations and some, some stone door frames and put some ramps on one side. And now learn Amaga Saw into it. There we go. And now you will have to get out of render distance so he won't be aggro on you anymore. There we go. Now the Amaga Saw is in is stuck in your trap. Oh, I just realized I have forgotten to eat my soup here. There we go. It just ran out. Now you can approach it again and sync with temperature and now he will be in this cage and now you will be able to choose who you want to fight with. So if you find a high level Daedon, you can get him over here and just kill it together with your Marga Saw here. So for example, I have this Daedon right now here and now we can just lure it up here and he will fight with you. There we go, now he comes and then you can just kill the Daedon here. There we go, and you see we can also tame the Amaga Saw with this strategy. You can also lure the creatures into the trap um, by luring them up here. Um, yeah, the huge benefit from this is that the Amaga Saw won't run into some hostile creatures that potentially can kill him. For example, a, a UT Runners with some Kanos like over there. If you if this would be a 150 group, then the Amaga Saw could potentially die, and this wouldn't be good for our efficiency efficiency either. So yeah, this strategy is definitely recommended because it's also very easy to do here. And another small tip that you can use. Um, yeah, as I already mentioned, if the Magasaur goes below 80% health, we lose some efficiency here. So we can just take a Snow Owl, a tamed one, obviously, if you want to know how to tame a Snow Owl, I can uh, uh, link to you the taming video in the description and just heal the Magasaur with this strategy. Oh, I just, <laughs> he just used my snow all as a ramp uh, to, yeah, escape here. And yeah, with this strategy, we don't get below 80% health because we can just heal it up as soon as he loses some HP. So yeah, just keep the efficiency high with, uh, with the help of the snow all also very easy and effective. And for the next strategy, a huge shout out to you, the creator Captain Fat Dog. I will also link his video in the video description that has created this trap. Um, if you also want to know how many resources and stuff you know, make sure to check out his video because I'm just gonna build this trap real quick and gonna explain to you how it works. So that's how the trap looks like now. Um, now we need a Daedon um, and if you can't find a Daedon you can also use a Sabertooth or high level Wolf. In the best case you also get a high level Daedon. Then lure him into this lower path, uh, part here. So he's stuck in there. Now search an Amaga Saw and sync up with it. And then lure it into the upper part of the trap here.
There we go. Now he should be stuck in it, even though it doesn't look like it's stuck. The trap works very simple now. The Amagosaur thinks that he can attack the Daedon, but he actually can't. And yeah, theoretically, if we attack the Daedon now, the Amagosaur will get his taming process done. Let me show it to you real quick. There we go. And now you will see that the Amagosaur is getting some taming process done here. Now, so we don't have to get in new Daedons, we will use again the Snow Owl. And just go ahead and yeah, as soon as the Daedon is low on health, you can just go there and attack it and keep doing this. And as soon as the Daedon is low on health, we can check this with a Spy Glass. Where do we have it? Uh, oh, Magnifying Glass, sorry. There we go. You see he has 3.2k health and he's healing himself up too. Um, but now we could just go ahead and just heal it with our Snow Owl. So there we go. He's almost full life now again. And we can keep attacking the Daedon now with our Snow Owl, Owl or with any other creature. And we can do this until the Amagasaur is tamed here. Make sure to some, uh, check sometimes if the Amagosaur needs some kibble. There we go. Not yet, but you see we are already at 5%. This is a max level Amagosaur. Um, yeah, so a very easy strategy. And the good thing also about this is that the Amagosaur will always get 100% efficiency since he won't get any damage with this one. And we just need one Daedon and we can tame theoretically multiple Amagosaurs with one Daedon since we won't kill it. We will just lo uh, lower it on health here. So, and after some times, congratulations, you tamed your Amagasaur, and yeah, you can use this trap obviously multiple times with this strategy. Um, just build it once in an area. You can also, g like, uh, grab the Amagasaur and pull it into another area if you, uh, something somewhere in your base is so somewhere where you want to have it. But yeah, now you can cry it to get it out, or you can even destroy the trap if you don't need it anymore. And then congratulations, you tamed your first Amagasaur here. So, but what are the abilities of the Amagasaur now? First of all, we have a normal, like, head swipe, I would say. So that's our basic attack. Then on... He can't jump, but we can sprint. And he's quite fast, uh, especially for his size. You also see the stats for a 150 tame. Um, yeah, so a decent amount of health and stuff. If we press C, he will shake around and then you will see his spikes will change color. Yeah, for example, right right now they are red or orange. Now they are blue and now they are like purple. Um, I will explain to you in a second what they are for. First of all, um, yeah, to, we will need these spikes. These are an item um, that we will need for some bosses. And here we can just do retrieve spikes. We will also need them um, for the saddle. So if we go here, Amagasaur, there we go. You will also see you need the spikes. So you can theoretically just tame one and then get the spikes for free. We can just harvest as many as we want. And you see he's even losing them. And they will grow back. They will also be shown in this on the bottom left taskbar here. Um, you see they don't take that long to... Yeah, regrow. So, but now we can press C and, uh, no, sorry, right mouse button. And then we can, like, shoot the spikes here. There we go. They are also dealing damage. And they will create an area with, yes, some, yeah, some smoke, I would say. And depending on the color of the spike, they are changing the effects. This one is, for example... Uh, the armor breaking Amarga spikes. So if you want have a creature that has a huge armor or a player, then you can use it against this one. Um, if we press C now again, we get the red spikes. Let me shoot one of these. There we go. Here we have the hot Amarga spike. You will, um, yeah, do some burn damage with these. Then we can press C again. And then just shoot it right here. And then you will see the cold Amaga spike that will freeze you in this area or slow you. Um, yeah, so these are the three three spikes we have or we can use. Pretty cool free feature and very unique ability in my opinion. 
and yeah you can use them for pvp or pve for pvp it's a little bit hard because you have to aim for the best area um let me try to find a creature right now here we have a normal kana let me let us shoot us with the spike right now there we go you see it's also dealing some damage now they get some yeah some freeze damage and the, they are yeah you see the kano is almost frozen now and now we can also shoot our fire arrow here a fire spike there we go and then you see he will get burn damage not that much but at least some damage here And now you will see they will freeze here. The saber tooth is frozen now, and the Kano too. Now you can easily attack them. And the base damage, as you can see, is also not that bad here. But yeah, that's it already with the video. I really hope you liked it. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!